Good morning, everyone. We'll start today's Metro COVID-19 press briefing with Mayor John Cooper, followed by Dr. Alex Jahangir, Chair of the Metro Board of Health and the Metro Coronavirus Task Force. We're joined today by Dr. William Schaffner, Professor of Preventative Medicine and Health Policy at Vanderbilt University School of Medicine, who is joining us by WebEx video conference. And Fabian Bettina, Planner in the Mayor's Office of Neighborhoods and Infrastructure and Liaison to the Office of New Americans. Director Chief William Swan of the Office of Emergency Management at Nashville Fire Department, and Dr. Michael Caldwell, Director of Public Health, are here to help answer your questions. We'll now begin with Mayor John Cooper. Good morning, Nashville. Before we review today's COVID-19 numbers, I would like to remember two civil rights heroes, superheroes, really, that we lost over the weekend, Reverend C.T. Vivian and Congressman John Lewis. In April of 1960, Reverend Vivian marched with Diane Nash and thousands of other peaceful demonstrators to demand justice on the steps of our historic courthouse. He was, in the words of Dr. King, the greatest preacher to ever live. And John Lewis was the son of sharecroppers who received a bachelor's degree from Fisk University. In 1965, he would help lead 600 marchers across the Edmund Pettus Bridge in Selma, Alabama, where he survived a brutal beating at the hands of state troopers. The two met in Nashville through American Baptist College and the Reverend James Lawson, and they helped organize sit-ins at segregated lunch counters in Nashville before taking their message of nonviolent protest for racial equality throughout the Jim Crow South. Their fight continues today, and we honor their sacrifice, courage, and lifelong service towards social change. And now, a review of our current coronavirus situation and citywide response. COVID-19 numbers continue an upward trajectory across the United States, now for 41 days. With 3.7 million total cases and 137,000 total fatalities related to the virus, Tennessee has reported nearly 80,000 total cases and 847 deaths to date. Davidson County has had 17,836 confirmed cases and 5,856 are active with 159 deaths. Nashville's 14-day daily average continues to rise and is currently at 382. That's up 40 cases since our last briefing. The transmission rate remains high at 1.20. We currently have 21% of hospital floor beds available and 21% of ICU beds available, which are slightly above our target of 20% for both metrics. We are working closely with our local health care partners to monitor our hospital capacity regularly it can fluctuate throughout the day. And as Dr. Jahangir has mentioned before, our local healthcare providers make use of their own surge capacity as needed. We are communicating with our partners at the state regarding regional overflow capacity on a daily basis. Last week, a White House Coronavirus Task Force report was released. The chose Tennessee is one of 18 nationwide hotspots and the report asks each spot to take swift action to adopt emergency safety measures. Now, many of these recommendations Davidson County had already implemented in order to reverse the trend of rising COVID-19 cases and hospitalizations and deaths. But this report is the latest evidence that our nation isn't providing a coordinated federal response to address the national coronavirus outbreak. County governments can do many things on our own, but responding to a global pandemic as an individual county is not going to provide the most effective response. But counties, one by one, in Tennessee, are responding in order to flatten the curve of the virus. Having what is now effectively a regional mask ordinance created county by county is a major achievement and it will save lives. We need a concerted effort with our partners at every level of government, and until then, we will continue to struggle with this every county for itself approach that will deliver varying results. Williamson County Medical Center has suspended some elective surgeries as the hospital has seen a doubling in COVID-19 hospitalizations there 
and staff shortages due to the latest spike in the disease. Sumner Regional Medical Center has also raised concerns about its hospital capacity, reporting that it has been operating at or near top capacity for several weeks. The state has reported a number of hospitalizations, and some healthcare facilities across the state are currently implementing their surge plans due to increased COVID-19 cases. Now, since our last press briefing, Rutherford, Montgomery, and Wilson counties have recognized the vital role of masks in our regional COVID-19 response strategy and has issued their own face covering ordinance. Recent evidence shows that wearing a mask not only reduces the chance of spreading the virus, but also reduces the severity of the disease and the length of hospitalization. Now, upon issuing their mask ordinance, Mayor Bill Ketron thanked Rutherford County residents and local businesses for their support and stated that the reality is some of the county's citizens and visitors are just not taking this health event seriously enough. And that reality is not just here in the Nashville area, but across our state and nation, and it requires action. This past weekend, videos of crowded sidewalks outside restaurants and similar establishment made national news. Clearly, more must be done to prevent individuals, particularly those who are not invested in the long-term safety of our community or the success of our local economy, from violating our public health orders and putting our entire city at risk. Yesterday, with the recommendation of the Board of Health, I directed the Metro Public Health and Board and Metro Legal to begin the process of creating a new public health order that directs restaurants and restaurants that have ended up being bars in practice to close by 10 p.m. across the county, as well as other businesses that serve alcohol to close by 10 p.m. This order is intended to enable our businesses to operate responsibly while also discouraging those who would come here and shirk their personal and societal responsibilities during this public health crisis. A city that can't reopen schools smoothly is a city that can't be back to normal. The parents of more than 100,000 children and the children themselves need Nashville to break the spread of the disease and we must use the tools we have to get that done. If we have to tell 100,000 children to stay home, we can tell public facilities to close early. Similar ordinances are currently in place in California, Colorado, Florida, Illinois, Kansas, North Carolina, Oregon, and South Carolina. And the order is expected to be in place by this Friday, July the 24th. In the meantime, amended order number nine stays in effect, which closes all bars and limited service restaurants through the end of the month to help stem the tide of rising cases. This action was also recommended in the recent White House Coronavirus Task Force report. Additionally, all transportainment vehicles under the Metro TLC authority, including pedicabs, pedal carriages, and limousines, will also be closed until at least July the 31st. The crowded and close contact settings facilitated by these types of businesses contributes to our public health crisis. And as long as our COVID-19 spike continues in Nashville and our surrounding counties, we must be vigilant. I'm grateful to Hugh Atkins and all our Metro Public Health personnel for their hard work and dedication to enforcing our public health ordinances. This is hard work, but lives literally depend on flattening the curve of the coronavirus. Let me be clear, no one is above the law and no one is exempt from following the law, regardless of your intentions. We are facing a public health crisis unlike anything we have seen in our lifetimes. But success in the time of a global pandemic requires full cooperation for business owners, workers, and their patrons across Davidson County. Remember, Nashville, don't share your air. If eight out of 10 Nashvillians carefully follow Metro's face covering order, we can avoid reverting to earlier phases in our roadmap and restore our local economy. When we mask up, our cases will go down and we'll be able to move forward on our roadmap to reopen Nashville. Ultimately, it's our responsibility as Nashvillians and neighbors to wear masks in public places to keep ourselves and each other safe. And please stay mindful of the three C's 
which presents us with a much higher risk of virus transmission. Closed spaces, crowded places, and close contact settings. Any Davidson County resident or small business owner who needs a mask can receive them by visiting the Lentz Public Health Center Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. until 3 p.m. You can learn more about our mask ordinance and how to comply with the order at covid19.nashville.gov. And this morning, I want to welcome Dr. William Schaffner, Professor of Preventive Medicine and Health Policy at Vanderbilt University School of Medicine. Dr. Schaffner is a respected authority on infectious diseases and is joining us this morning by video conference to discuss the importance of wearing masks in public places and observing other healthy habits. And it is also my pleasure to welcome Fabian Bedne from our office, who is here to discuss the progress being made to address the coronavirus hotspot in Southeast Nashville through education and outreach campaigns in partnership with Salome Health and the Tennessee Immigrant and Refugee Rights Coalition. And I'll now turn it over to Dr. Al Shahanger, Chair of the Metro Coronavirus Task Force. Thank you, Mayor Cooper, and good morning, Nashville. Here's the latest on coronavirus in Davidson County. We now have 18,056 confirmed cases. That's 1,977 new cases since our update on Thursday and 240 since our update yesterday. There are currently 5,638 active cases, and that's up 456 since Thursday. 68% of all confirmed cases, or 12,278 confirmed cases, have now recovered. Since Thursday, eight Nashvillians have died of COVID-19. 155 Nashvillians have now died as a result of confirmed COVID-19. And the mortality rate for our city is 0.85%. Our rolling average is 371 new cases per day, and that's up 31 cases since Thursday. 23% of ICU beds in our region, as well as 20% of hospital beds are currently available. 214 people are currently hospitalized in Davidson County hospitals with COVID-19. One week ago, that, was, that number was 199. This means that about 10% of patients in Nashville hospitals at this moment are there because of COVID-19. Now, there's been a lot more interest in hospitalization numbers especially when you're starting to see hospitals at near capacity in other states. So I wanted to dive into this a bit today. Hospital capacity is a very fluid metric. All of our hospitals have surge capacity that they use um, in the normal ebb and flow of hospital uh, administration. Sometimes in a very busy flu season, the hospital capacity could get down to the single, per, um, single digits. But COVID-19 is different for many reasons. In the U.S., the average stay for a COVID-19 patient is 11 days for survivors and 15 days for non-survivors, according to a recent study out of UC Berkeley and Kaiser. For comparison, the average length of stay for pneumonia in the United States is 5.4 days. This means as more people are admitted for COVID-19, there will be less hospital beds because they will be occupied for longer periods of time. We must ensure that we have the capacity of to, available to take care of our COVID-19 patients along with other conditions like cancer or cardiac issues and similar diseases that will have a worse outcome if care is delayed. But it's not just the physical beds available that impact hospital capacity. You also have to take in consideration the staff needed to take care of the patients in those beds. As the virus spreads in our community, nurses, doctors, and therapists will become infected and they won't be able to take care of um, and provide care to those that need it. And this could possibly lead to hospitals having to close some beds that they cannot staff. Right now, our hospitals are keeping up with the demand. Our hospital capacity is remaining steady, even with the new cases. But that doesn't mean we can ease up and we still need you to wear a mask and socially distance. While we are steady, our, our doctors, our nurses, and our hospital workers remain on the front lines fighting COVID-19 and taking care of patients every day. For months, they have met these challenges. It hasn't been easy at all. And they deserve our gratitude, just like the essential workers in our grocery stores and all the other things that we need to get our life going. Overall, more than 145,000 Nashvillians have now been tested for COVID-19. 
and 12% of those tests have been positive. Over the last week, we've had a 15% positivity rate, and this is slightly down from the 18% that we saw the week before, which is heading in the right direction. However, this virus has not slowed. One month ago, we were at 10%. Remember, if you have any concern about this virus, feel free to get tested at one of our community assessment centers open Monday through Friday from 7 a.m. to 1 p.m. And if you have any questions about COVID-19, feel free to call our hotline at 615-862-7777. And that's open seven days a week from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Finally, you are seeing more and more businesses, both nationally and locally, requiring customers to wear a mask. I appreciate that they are valuing the health of their customers and employees. Please support businesses that work to keep you safe and don't support those that don't. We have a mask mandate for everyone who goes out in Davidson County. And as the mayor said, many of our surrounding counties are doing the same. I'm grateful to our area businesses as well as our neighboring counties and their mayors for listening to our plea for a regional approach to masks. It's going to take all of us in the region working together looking out for each other in order to stay safe. Thank you so much for your attention, and I'd like to turn it over to Dr. Schaffner from Vanderbilt. Mayor Cooper, Dr. Jahangar, Mr. Bedney, Chief Swan, and Dr. Caldwell, it's always good to be with you, standing strong against the COVID virus. Everyone listening knows the basics. The COVID virus is a highly contagious virus that spreads from person to person efficiently through prolonged personal contact, both indoors and outdoors. You know that at least a third of these infected, perhaps more, are completely without symptoms or have only minor symptoms. Such persons are efficient, if unknowing, dreaded spreaders of the virus. The more the virus is spread, the more likely it will be spread to older persons and those with chronic illnesses, the very persons who will suffer severe disease, need hospitalization, and risk dying of COVID infection. Therefore, we need to curb the spread in order to prevent these serious outcomes, which brings us to masks and face shields. Remember, remember asymptomatic spread. You and I can feel perfectly healthy, but we could be infected and not know it. In order to interrupt such spread, we must all wear masks. They protect others and they also offer protection to the person wearing the mask. We need to do this at any time that we are around others outside our homes. Please, don't work hard to figure out when you do not have to wear the mask. Better to wear it. You will signal to all who see you that you are with the program. You respect others by wearing the mask, and you demonstrate community solidarity. We're all in this together. Please do not be coy and clever and wear thin face coverings, such as a light scarf or a crocheted mask. They do not work, and they do not respect others. Let me address some of the nonsense on social media, that masks interfere with breathing, that they will not let in enough oxygen or let out carbon dioxide, the bad air. That's nonsense. Masks do not impede your respiratory function, your breathing function. Yesterday, I had the privilege of addressing new Vanderbilt medical students on their very first day of class. It was a privilege and it was, yes, surreal. We were in a larger than usual lecture hall because all the students were spaced out, social distancing. 
all of us wore masks or face shields. Yes, it was odd, different from the way I've been lecturing for 40 years. But we made it work. We all adjusted to COVID because COVID obliged us to change. We all need to change and to do these things in order to flatten the curve and reduce transmission of the virus. We can do this together for ourselves and for each other. Wear masks. Observe social distancing. Avoid crowds of any kind, professional, recreational, and reverential. The virus does not care. It loves to spread in crowds. It's the new normal. We're in this all together. Thank you. Let's all participate. And it is the new normal. It will be that way for the foreseeable future. There's no quick fix. So let's all join in to protect ourselves and others. Thank you very much. Wear the mask. Thank you, Dr. Schaffner. I'd now like to introduce Fabian Benna from the Office of the Mayor. Thank you, and I want to second him on the importance of wearing a mask. I am 60 years old. I don't want to die, so I wear all the time. So please wear a mask. Uh, and this, I uh, appreciate the opportunity to give an update on the outreach plan. Since we started executing our at risk outreach plan, we have seen a significant improvement. We are very thankful to everyone that has come together to make that happen, from the health department and volunteers to local council members, community leaders, clergy, media, and nonprofits, we have witnessed a concerted effort to improve the situation. Some of the plan includes Spanish press conferences uh, and webinars in Spanish uh, to educate the community, continuing to build relationships with community leaders and influencers in order to build a bridge between vulnerable communities and the health department, such as cultural organizations, religious organizations and leaders, nonprofit organizations, community leader influencers, media organizations. We are continuing to create and share PDFs and digital information in multiple languages and distribute around the communities. We are continuing to work with local Latino radio and media to promote testing center information and health protocols. We are continuing to sponsor uh, paid social media campaign. Uh, we are continuing to distribute translated signage and social media graphics to community leaders and as that they post on their social media. We created instructional videos and testing center process in multiple languages. We are continuing to distribute reusable masks to address communities at mobile testing events, the health department, 77,800 masks were delivered to local community organizations and also to case or contacts, we gave reusable and or disposable PPE within about two days of request. We are continuing to send mobile testing teams to hotspots areas around the county. We are continuing to partner with the State uh, uh, Department of Health Office of Minority Health to coordinate and advertise additional testing sites. We have na native Spanish-speaking communicable disease investigators at the health department to interview cases. We are continuing to have enforcement in businesses, etc. We have a consortium of community partners to help with dedicated Spanish hotline, hotel vouchers, home visits at address cases, second harvest food support and income support through United Way. And every week we have a conference call with the Southeast Council members to update them, but most importantly to get feedback from them on ways to improve our efforts. We're constantly looking for ways to improve our efforts. We really appreciate everyone that is already doing its part to improve safety to all our residents. Our plan focuses on COVID-19, but I hope that this is the start of a long-term plan for healthier communities where we have an at-risk population. 
if you are interested in helping and speak Spanish, uh, please uh, email neuamericans at navshville.gov and I will get you uh, started. Thank you so much. Have a good day. Thank you, Fabian. We'll now begin taking media questions, starting with Julia Palazzo at WKRN. Julia. Thank you, Chris. Good morning, everyone. A few questions. Um, Mayor Cooper, were you surprised that zero citations have been issued? Do you believe that police are not doing enough to enforce the mask mandate, especially with the crowds over the weekend? Um, also, we spoke with one bar owner who was curious, wondering if um, you know the businesses that are being forced to close is the city doing anything to help with city bills and taxes? Uh, he told us that it's going to be difficult to make a profit at this point for 2020. And Dr. Caldwell, the Nashville Convention and Visitors Corporation told us they're working with your department to find the next level of enforcement. Do you know what that next level might look like? Thank you. Thank you, Julia. Mayor Cooper. Um, thank you, Julia. The Bar owner that you mentioned, and all owners, all business owners in Nashville, boy, it is in their interest more than anybody else to get people to wear masks, to socially distance, to stop the spread of the disease. The economic problems generated by this are intense, and we will need all the help that we can muster to help everybody. But the trick, the important thing, the vital thing is to get right with public health protocols and flatten the spread of the coronavirus, and then we can move on in our roadmap. They, we will all suffer. Let's make the suffering as short as possible. Prolonging the suffering is not a good strategy for our city. As for zero citations, we are trying to encourage the public, the population, that it is not up to the public health department or to the police to catch people. It is up to the public to expect a level of safety from each other. You, we cannot cite our way out of this disease. We just can't do it. Now, we can try to be fair and we can point out to people, but primarily this is about education. And when the public understands that if 8 out of 10 people start wearing masks, it not only limits the spread of the disease, it is materially effective on the people that have the disease in a shorter hospitalization and a lower fatality rate. This is one of the few tools that we have, but we, it is an effective one. And look at Europe. Right now, they are reopening. We are not. We were both at about the same levels a couple of months ago. They are now basically back to normal if you look at the disease rate, and we are four or five times what we used to be. So it can be done. We just have to do it here. Good morning. We continue to explore options for enforcement with a variety of partners throughout the community. Uh, those get looked at and discussed not only here locally, but regionally as well as nationally. And ultimately, those uh, filter in through uh, decisions that the Coronavirus Task Force uh, makes uh, with the mayor's partnership. Harriet Wallace at Fox 17, you're on the air. Yes, good morning. I've got a couple of questions for Mayor Cooper. Mayor Cooper, my first question is, you've issued, uh, between you and the health department, have issued a number of directives for businesses in the Broadway area, but yet we continue to see people gather, not social distance, not wearing masks as you've ordered, and is now uh, in place by law. Is it time, have you all considered a moment where you would close Broadway area, period? We've gotten a lot of uh, comments and people asking us, and we're wondering if that is on the table. My second question, we now have, because of the requirement for masks, we now have some businesses that are choosing to close on their own. Your thoughts about them closing risking making revenue and likely further compounding the financial impact of the pandemic. Thank you. Thank you, Harriet. Mayor Cooper. Well, thank you, Harriet. Uh, by 10 o'clock, starting on Friday, 
by 10 o'clock, starting on Friday. This is enough notice for people to adjust their plans. We always said that we were going to learn from this and adjust as we're going along. This seems to be a critical adjustment that is required. But let me have a message to all the owners, all the businesses, people that are keeping you closed or not letting you open on normal hours are the people who are not wearing masks and not complying with social distancing. It is not the public health department. It is the behavior of people not doing what they should. Every owner of every business needs to go on the street and tell people to wear masks so they can be open on normal hours. That's an important thing for the public to understand. It is not the government doing something to them. This is us keeping each other safe. And when we can, we can reopen successfully. It's a simple message. I hope the media makes that clear to people. If you have a business and you are hurting, go out and tell people to wear masks. Go out and do what you can to lower the spread of the disease, keep people out of the hospital from crashing our health care facilities. And as I said earlier in my remarks, 100,000 children should be enough to have people respond. If 100,000 children can't go to school, what are we doing having business as normal, right? We can do it. Stacy Case at Fox 17. Stacy. Thank you all. I have two questions. First of all, businesses are closing right and left. Residents are making financial adjustments daily to try to make ends meet because of the pandemic. Is your administration looking at any solutions to possibly be able to reduce in any way the planned 34% property tax hike that is coming before it takes effect? And then secondly, any thoughts to help small businesses, maybe having NES give them breaks on their electric bill, maybe letting them defer their property tax bill? So many are hanging on by a thread. Thank you, Stacey. There. Well, I think NES is extending um, some of its dates. I think the state has yet to completely announce, but has plans for further assistance to the business community. I think at the federal government, there's a bill that's, I think, before Congress and people expect it to be passed shortly, which also would have some help in it. As the property tax rate um, hike, as unfortunate as that is, it is necessary. I'm proud of the council for showing the leadership that's required in this difficult time. Most everybody complains about politics and politicians never showing any leadership, not being willing to do the hard thing that is necessary. Well, this is a case where everybody did the hard thing that is necessary, the hard thing to keep us functioning as a city. And the 34% tax increase is simply returning our tax rate to less than what it was three years ago and is below what our 25 and 30 year average tax rate is in the lowest tax city and the lowest tax state in the country. We can do it. We can do it. And let's get beyond the era of really not being able to show some leadership and so show some leadership. And that's going to be in addressing the virus as well as addressing the city finances, which had gotten into terrible shape over the last few years, making us particularly vulnerable in this time of crisis. But the council, with incredible leadership, has shown a path to get that problem solved. And for once, government is making a hard choice to get it done for the citizens. Nancy Amon is at WSMV. You're on the air. Hey, good morning. Thank you. I have a question for Dr. Jahangir. Have you considered the pool testing that the White House report is talking about? And for the mayor, can you clarify the 10 p.m. order that's now in place? And are you considering or would you consider a curfew of 10 p.m. for citizens? Because it appears that a lot of the problem is that so many tourists are gathered on the sidewalk trying to get into a business that's closed. seems like that's what a lot of the problem is. So would a curfew be considered. Thank you, Nancy. Dr. John Gear. Nancy, I believe the pool testing you're referring to, the White House wrote about, literally just approved, got approved by the FDA maybe three days ago. So the availability in, in, in our um, area is, is not available to my knowledge. With that said, I think the, I, the concept of pool testing does seem promising to be able to, to maybe increase um, the number of tests that can be run 
maybe by a, um, 30 percent, which would definitely help with our long delays that we're having. So anything that helps us get our results back quickly, I'm in favor of. That the, the FDA, I believe, just approved the first pool testing just um, a few days ago. So um, hopefully we'll have it soon. Thank you. Um, thank you, Nancy. Um, the curfew, all tools have to be on the table. While you have 100,000 children at home, we're going to explore everything in order to get our city back to normal. But it's important for people, for residents and tourists to realize Nashville is not exempt from the virus. You can't drive a few hours and come to Nashville and pretend that it doesn't, isn't here and that you're not going to spread it here, that you're not going to pick it up here. The same rules apply. And the suspension of belief, the magical thinking that has allowed people to pretend that it doesn't exist here is not going to solve our public health problems. So the answer to your question is everything has to be on the table until we get us back to normal. I am hopeful that the 10 p.m. and the stopping of serving of alcohol will naturally have the right effect in stopping the three C's and reducing the amount of close contact spreading in closed spaces. Um, and we will examine the results and look and learn and adjust as necessary to make progress on the disease. Brett Kellman at the Tennessean. Good morning. I have some questions about the nuts and bolts of this order. Um, will this affect things like restaurant takeout after 10 p.m. or drive-through restaurants after 10 p.m.? Uh, basically, specifically what will be closed and, if anything, what restaurants will be allowed to serve after 10? Dr. Junger. Thank you, Brett. Um, as of the way um, we anticipate this will, will be implemented, takeout orders and drive throughs will be allowed to remain open within the normal um, way they operate. So thank you. Our last question this morning is from Yen Jung at the Tennessee. Good morning. Uh, if the new order is not effective and crowds continue to persist after 10 p.m. on Lower Broadway, uh, what will the city do? And it's been mentioned that education is the primary you know, task with mask enforcement, but the mask mandate was signed on June 28th. I'm curious why it took until July 14th for flyers and warnings to be handed out, um, out in public. Thank you. I'm sorry, Ian, do you mind repeating your, uh, your question? The, the second part of your I, question. I hear you, but I don't know if you asked my to repeat, uh, my first question is that the new order is not effective and crowds continue to persist after 10 p.m. on Lower Broadway. Uh, what will the city do? Right. And then the, the, the part about uh, flyers being handed out? Yeah, I'm curious on why it took until July 14th for education and flyers to be handed out uh, when we talk about the primary task of mass enforcement being uh, education. Mayor Cooper. Um, in answer to your question, if this is not effective, we will keep trying. Uh, we will adjust with the tools that we have. Um, we would have preferred a national response, a national um, set of practices that made it easier. But we are evolving in Tennessee a regional path, county by county and then by the region. And the disease gives us a report card every day. So we can, we, we can learn from that to improve. Every day we're graded, frankly. And we have not liked the grades that we have received. And so we're going to adjust until we're going to be able to be successful in this hardest of all classes for a city. Regarding the mask um, question, um, if I'm understanding your question right, um, when the when the mandate was was placed, um, there was about a week or two of education, and now the police are are out doing what the police do, and and it seems like everyone they've encountered. I think I read somewhere over five thousand people thus far 
um, have, have been approached by the police, everyone's been compliant. And so I'm sure the police would, would write citations and if, if things escalate from there would, would um, arrest someone if needed. Um, but it doesn't seem to have been the case thus far. So I think education first, people now understand the importance of masks and that's why, um, that's why we're where we are. Thank you. And the latest number from the MNPD is 6,138 verbal warnings. Those are all the questions we have this morning. I'd like to thank Dr. William Schaffner from Vanderbilt University School of Medicine and Mr. Fabian Bentna for joining us this morning. The next scheduled Metro COVID-19 press briefing will air on Thursday, July 23rd at 9.30 a.m. Thank you for joining us. This concludes today's event. This has been a service of the Metro Nashville Network. If you would like to see this presentation again, or for more information about this and other programs, visit nashville.gov.